these are super, super cool. They're, I mean, they're ridiculously cool. They are, you know, they can see in front of them, behind them, it's above them and below them all at the same time. They have like thousands of facets on their eyes, like 6,400 facets on their eyes. Uh, even in low light, they have special eyes on, like towards the top of their head that they can see different types of light, different wavelengths of light. Um, they're just incredible. They're just incredible. My name is Cheryl. My name is Susie. We started beekeeping as a hobby. Our beehive grew really quickly. We steward bees first because they're pollinators and on the property here we want to give back to the plants and our garden and help have a great ecosystem existing and then selfishly uh, we're stewards of bees because we like their honey. There are times when beekeeping is difficult and there are times the majority of the time beekeeping is not a difficult it's not it's not hard. The difficult part for me in having bees is figuring out the right thing to do because there's so much information out there and everybody's doing it differently. It's like if you ask somebody, you know, how would you, how do you make bread? Well, you know, you know what the basic ingredients are, but everything else is up to, you know, whoever's baking the bread. So I, I feel like this is very similar. The basics are all the same, but everything else is completely different. The three types of bees in the hive are the queen, and there's one queen. There's drones, and those are the male bees, and their function is to go out and mate with other queens from other hives. And then the worker bees, and that's the, the majority, the thousands of bees that are in the hives behind us are the, the worker bees, and those are mostly the ones that you see. You'll see drones, but not as often as you'll see the worker bees. Yeah, worker bees are all female, and the queen is female. Queens can live, what, three to five years? And the, the worker bees, they live about six weeks. So the first two weeks, they stay in the hive, and they manage the day-to-day -day of the hive. They take out waste, they haul out dead bees, they, I mean, they, they manage the entire hive. Um, you know, they take care of the queen. Uh, then after two weeks, then they can forage. Then they will leave and go forage. Bees, when they forage, uh, they bring back a couple of things. Um, they can bring back water. They can bring back um, nectar from flowers and they can bring back pollen. When they forage, they get pollen all over their bodies. And then they use their legs to scrape the pollen back and then they put it on, um, there's some special hairs that make like buckets on their back legs and they pack it all in there it's to like carry cargo back. Pants. Cargo With pants. They have like on their legs yeah. and they fill it. It's you... exactly right. Mm -hmm. And then they also carry um, nectar mm -hmm. in their stomach. They make the honey from the nectar that they bring back and the pollen they make bee bread out of. They can live off those supplies during the spring and summer when things start getting colder and we don't have anything for them to bring back to make bee bread for or any nectar, then we supply that for them to make sure that they don't starve to death because we don't want that to happen. And um, But during the winter time, they will feed off the honey stores that are inside the hive. They will go back and they will start eating the honey that they've stored there. We process honey or pull honey out three times a year. In the spring, in the midsummer, and in the fall before we uh, winterize the hive. We leave it. We leave what they need for The lower wintering. two boxes are for them we don't touch that honey at all. They can, those lower two boxes are for whatever they want. And then we have queen excluders uh, above the lower two boxes. So the queen cannot go up into the upper part of the hive and, and make more bees up there because we don't want to harm any bees. So we're not ever going to take honey out of the lower two boxes. The process of getting the honey out of the boxes from start to finish <laughs> is Different every time we do it. Yeah. <laughs> the process is starting with getting everything ready. And by everything ready means having empty boxes to put the frames in. The tools, the smoker, the bee suits, all the tools necessary. And then someplace to put the frames that are filled with honey. We want to get all the bees off of those frames. We don't want to take the bees into the house where we get the honey off. So we need someplace to put those. So we have a cart that we use. Then once we have everything ready, we come out with the smoker, we take the lid off, we smoke the hive. After we've got them out, 
and we put everything back together. We have the frames out. We'll replace them. Um, Whatever we take out, we put something in its place. We don't leave any open spaces in the hive because the bees will start creating their own comb. They'll, they'll just in, do their own. Yeah, yeah, they'll just start, just like they would in a, a wild hive in a, in a tree, It there would be comb everywhere and it would not do well for us to try to remove that um, efficiently and to, then to get the honey from it. So if we take a frame out, we put a frame in. So and if we can put a then, frame that's already built out with, with wax, with comb, then we're saving them a lot of work. So we saved all the frames that we removed honey off of last time in August. We'll put into the fall hive when we remove those frames. So it that, takes a lot of energy to build a, um, to build up wax comb. It takes eight pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. So um, if we can already have that built out for them, that's less work that they have to do. We get like the that. frames off, we close up the hive. So then we take the frames inside. We've experimented with a couple different ways of opening the comb. The comb, the honey is inside the comb and it's got like a wax cap on it. So we have to remove the cap to get the honey to come out. The first time we used heat and we melted the caps and we were gonna let gravity just let all the honey run out. And after three days of letting gravity work, it like the caps just- The honey was so thick. The honey was so, was thick, so thick, it didn't it, run out. It, it the was caps, horrible. The caps just horrible like idea. hardened back in. It was terrible, that one didn't work at all. So we, we scrapped that. Anybody thinking of that, skip it. Skip that part, it's a terrible idea. They make it look like it works really well. Yeah, it didn't work YouTube's really well. a liar. So then the second one, we tried the flow hive where you, you break it and it was really hard to break and... Brilliant idea. But, it's a brilliant idea. But not... Didn't work for us. It didn't work for it us. It wasn't what, like, not we didn't favorite. really have a lot of fun with that. So no. then the next one was... We used a combination of an electric knife and like a fillet knife. We tried scraping, you know, with the little cone. The yeah, where you, the you pop the caps off. off. That, that was a mess. That was a mess. Yeah. We ended so, up with a lot of wax everywhere, bits of wax. So we find that so far the best method has been the electric knife. Yeah, electric and just knife. Go and down, the... take the caps off, and then we take the frames and put them in a spinner, a metal container that has a centrifuge, centrifuge yeah. inside of it, and then just turn it, and all the honey just flows flies off. off. That works really great. And then we drain from the centrifuge through a three mesh filter system. Gravity just through the filters into a bucket and then from the bucket we fill the bottles. Go straight from the comb to the jar basically. We don't heat anything. We don't want to pasteurize it. So that was another reason why we got away from using a heat gun and melting the caps was that it ended up heating up the honey as well which could potentially you don't taste it anymore k kill off it whatever the good stuff in the honey is so the flavor of the honey differs between spring summer and fall and the density we're learning as well this it's new to us that's new to us yeah the spring honey is denser and lighter in color because the only nectar and pollen that's available in spring here is here is clover and honeysuckle so that's all that's going into it that we're aware of the summer honey then is everything else that's pollinating around here. Wild so flowers, everything you see along trees, the sun road, red trees, buds, yeah, red buds. Oh anything that's native to Missouri is going into that summer, that summer honey. And then as the summer wildflowers and things die off, then you've got the trees, trees. that they're pulling from. All the fall stuff. So the pollen and the nectar differs throughout the year depending on what's in bloom. I think there's a couple things we want people to know about bees. One, honeybees are not harmful. This whole time, you can see in the background, the bees are coming and going, coming and going. They're busy, they have a job to do. They're not interested in us. And if they are, then it should be a compliment. And they think you're a flower or some wonderful thing that they want to take and bring back to their hive. They're not interested in stinging or attacking. It's not their job, it's not in them to do that, and if they do, it's only because they think they're protecting something. Drones don't sting, and worker bees sting um, with their barbed uh, stinger, and then they die. And so that's really not what they want to have happen. If they're doing that, then that's a last resort. They felt like there was 
nothing else they could do to protect them or their hive than to give their life. So if I was going to ask anybody to do something, it is plant, please plant some wildflowers. Everybody plant wildflowers. Um, plant wildflowers, native species, native species, and maintain them in natural ways. Don't use chemicals. Don't use pesticides. Stay away from things that will kill our insects and our bees and our animals. Um, the bottom line is we want to protect the bees. Uh, we like them a lot, and we don't want anything bad to happen to them. And you know, we're stewards, I guess, of of them. I want to be a good steward of our bees. Be kind. Be kind to each other and be kind to bees. Mm -hmm.